Hello, it's Ryan from Building Body, Mind, Soul, and we are going to look at, today we do a lot of stuff with the, obviously like the martial arts and, and muscle building and calisthenics and cardio and anaerobic and blah, 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 all the physical stuff, that's cool. But I think people have to remember building body, mind, soul, and the way you look at it, you know, it, our sign's a little faded here from the sun when the doors are open, but basically body, mind, soul, everything gets bigger and more um, important as you go up to the physical, mental, spiritual. Lots of people, all cultures, not just the Shaolin and Japanese samurai, but all cultures have excessively looked at, all, especially all of the old martial art cultures, physical, mental, spiritual. And there's one kind of hallmark thing that follows is that you know, your body is important. Like you wanna be strong, you wanna be fast, you wanna be dynamic, you wanna be flexible and all that stuff. But your mind, right, your mental fortitude, your willpower, your rationale, logic, intellectual ability, um, and you know all of that stuff is important in the mental, and that rides over physical. And then more importantly, the most important is your spirituality. Could be with or without religion. That's a separate bag that helps some people in the spiritual realm. But I'm talking about your soul as a human being, your spirituality, and the and the spirit in which you do things. And so I think um, we're going to focus a little bit today actually on the mental, where we're going to look at something that I bet is more uh, important to a lot of the population than you or I would imagine, uh, and probably even yourself at some point, and that is the management of ex excessive, persistent, perseverating thoughts, bothersome, intrusive thoughts, which could be uh, random or just... Um, uh, intermittent, you know, daily, not just one time popping up. And, and what does that all mean? And let's talk about it briefly. So the first way I, I would explain it is when you have thoughts, there's a couple things to remember. First of all, the most important thing, depend, uh, with, with the exception of the intent behind it, for random thoughts, we are not our thoughts, right? And so Meaning, if you have a random thought that just pops into your head, a great example is if somebody watches a horror movie, and you know the whole horror movie. This actually happened to a friend of mine. He was that we were watching a horror movie, and it was about some psycho crazy guy who was pushing people into the subway, and like that's like you know obviously a horrible thing. And then so. You know, the next day when he was at the subway, he was like, well, I was making sure like I would never do it or that I would never want to do it if I got angry at someone. And I'm like, but that reason, there's actually, you can trace back how that thought popped into your head. You just watched a movie within 24 hours about a psycho crazy guy who was doing that to people on a subway. So random thoughts sometimes have traces of where they come from um, uh, uh, that you, you know, things that you can, you know, that have a trail, but also it could just be totally random. The brain is just a crazy mix of like neurochemicals and neurotransmitters. And it's not that insane to imagine like random, you know, things that pop into people's heads. What matters is like your characters, your actions and your motives. And so this is where you can go ahead and you can attack intrusive, bothersome, persistent thoughts that could either pop up just, you know, in five minutes and not go away and then it never happens again. Or it's something if you're somebody of chronic worry or anxiety, chronic severe stress, that a certain kind of thought or group of thoughts always seem to pop up in your head, not just one day for five minutes, but every day for you know, a couple, you know, maybe a couple weeks, some people a couple months, maybe some people a couple years. And so the way you fight this is with your mind. And you're going to look at C A M, your characters, your action, your motives. We actually use this in our children's program and in seminars I've done around the world with our martial art uh, school program in um, secondary schools where we're teaching kids, you know, how to. Um, judge other people when you have to, you know, decide how you feel about someone. And, you know, there's a kind of a bad thing that's gone around, I think, with, with kind of new age thinking of um, never judge. Well, you know, if you were, if, if Hitler was still living among us, you know, and you lived, you know, near him, you can and should be judging someone like Hitler. It's okay to pass judgment. It's how you pass judgment. The issue is never to not judge. It's how you judge someone. Well, 
Some people have already figured it out. Martin Luther King Jr. kind of knocked it out of the park years ago when he said, you know, judge somebody by the content of their character, not the color of their skin, or, you know, in other cases, whatever, you know, sexuality or religion or ethnicity or blah, 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 all those other things, by the content of their character. Well, that's at least one piece of this, right? And so character, actions, motives so that you can use this same framework on yourself in kind of self-introspection and self-analysis towards yourself when you're having this disturbing or persistent, you know, um, thoughts. Um, so your character, what are, what are the character traits that make you up as a person, who you are, all the different people who know you really well for many years, what they see you to be, how they see you, that's one way in the moment of, or moments of a continuous intrusive thought. That's one way you can fight back is, that's the first piece, right, of these three. One, two, three, character, action, motive, C-A-M. Your character, your own character, reflect on it for like a minute and just run that through your mind. The next is your actions. What are your actual actions? So the example I use that I think most people can relate to, at least people who commute to work, is road rage. We've all seen road rage. Like, you know, everybody's had stories of it or, or somebody who really got hurt because of it or somebody who could have got hurt. Somebody runs somebody off the road. I mean, you could kill somebody. You could kill a person with road rage, obviously. Um, and so how I think about it is, well, what were your actions? If you have a moment of, you know, a road rage incident where somebody cuts you off and, you know, you almost go off the road and you think for a moment, and a lot of people in the world would think this, not psychopaths, not sociopaths, not, you know, serial killers, I mean, regular people that you pass by every day at work. Um, a lot of people for a moment might think, oh, I should run him off the road and, and, and just, you know, take him off the road, or I should, you know, you want to do it back to him for a moment. Like, there may be a moment of anger and duress that you have an impulsive, angry thought. Probably the majority of people. Imagine if you had little kids, your baby in the car, you know, how, and, and you almost just hit a guardrail. That's your baby. To have a moment of rage is normal. If you just laughed it off and your baby's crying in panic, I would, then I would second guess you as a person. It would be more normal to have a moment of rage, right? <laughs> so, it, but the answer is what was your actions? What was your action? Like, you, hopefully, did not actually speed up, slam on your brakes in front of them, or actually try to run them off the road to hit a tree. Like, you didn't actually do that. You had a moment of aggressive, angry thought, understandably so, um, but you don't actually do the action. So you are made up of your character, your own actions. What are the actual actions you've done in the world? Because at the end of the day, in reality, all of us are dealing with each other's actions, right? Um, and the actions we take or lack thereof. And so your actions. But then the last part to complete this kind of self-introspection is your motives. And I say motives to kids because kids understand motive in, a, you know, in an easier way, whereas I, what I would say in like an, an adult seminar it are, is your intent. You know, what's your intent? And so your own intent um, in general. What is your intent? Well, your intent in that example of the road rage thing, your intent was not to wake up and say, I really hope I get a chance to run some guy off the road, let him hit a tree because you're not secretly insane. So and you're not secretly evil. That was not like your intent. When you woke up, you were probably doing your regular morning. You probably had no continuous, hateful, malicious thoughts. That was not your intent. If your intent, if your intent is to do something really bad or evil to someone and it makes you smile inside, you should get psychiatric help. Um, you should check yourself in somewhere, right? Because that's a very different person than someone who, you know, just doesn't have that intent. But now let's go towards the probably what applies to the 99.9% .9 of other people in this situation of, of, for those who have continuous intrusive thoughts or perseveration of, of bothersome thoughts, you can go ahead and look at your own intent every time you get the thought and just say, you know, is it something that your intent is to 
is to reassure yourself that you would never do it. The thought of you know, like killing someone is, is disgusting to you. You don't want to actually hurt another person, right? Is that your intent? Or is your intent that you secretly, you just are happy to hurt any innocent person at any chance you can get and you hope you could get away with it? I, again, for 99.9% of the planet population, I do not think that. Hopefully I'm right. Um, that they're not you know, thinking like that, right? If they are suffering from continuous intrusive thoughts, that they are on the other side where they just, they're reassuring themselves. And for whatever reason, you know, it's like um, in that road rage incident, that probably most people would have, you know, momentary thought, but then it goes away. But what if for some of us, an hour later, one hour later, there's a portion of the population still reassuring yourself, would I have run him off the road? If no, there was no one else around and there was a big tree up ahead, would I have tried to run him into it? That's you know almost a little OCD-ish, like, and they're still thinking about it an hour later. Again, their intent, they never wanted to hurt anyone that morning. And they don't like the idea of hurting someone, but they're still reassuring themselves an hour later. That's kind of where I'm at right now. That's what I'm addressing. And so, but, but the intent is to just keep reassuring themselves. And in fact, I think a lot of the population has this issue where we try to reassure ourselves the bad thing won't happen. And for some people, it might not just be like a harmful or bother, bothersome thought um, in, in terms of like violence. It could also just be something, I think, where, um, you know, you just, you know, for, well, for people who have real true general anxiety and worry, did you leave, you know, the iron on? Did you leave the stove on? Will your house burn down? And every time you have to turn your car back around. That's not a one-time momentary intrusive thought. That's like, oh yeah, you know, uh, Bob, Bob always has to, you know, he always is late because he always turns back around to make sure that, you know, the door wasn't left open to his house. He's done that almost every day of the week, you know, for several months. Well, Bob clearly has some anxiety order, you know, or issue or some, maybe some type of OCD, but whatever it is, like, you know, but, but clearly, like, that's a repetitive, intrusive thought that you have to look at, you know, like he could go back and he could look at his actions. Maybe one time he left the door open for real and that was like a trigger, right? Like a catalyst. But probably most of the time, 99% of the days, he always shuts the door. So you should start to build some confidence and reassurance. So what I'm saying is everybody can use this C-A-M character, action, motive, Everybody can use this, um, the character, action, and motive uh, analysis. And so you really can, and you should, because at the end of the day, whether it's a one-time thought that's bothering you for a few minutes, or daily periodic thoughts that seem to randomly pop into your head, but it's a pattern, you can just stop like a car, hit the brakes and say, what's my character? What are my actions? What have my actions actually been? What have, if I'm worried about, if, if I was gonna do something really evil and horrible to somebody, well, have you in the past? I, I mean, like truly, whatever on whatever level of evil you're worrying about. Again, hopefully for 99.9% .9 of us around the world, no, you have not. And then what are your motives or you know, your intent? What's your true intent, you know? And so you can rest assured that you're not somebody that secretly wakes up every morning just waiting for a chance to get away to do something really bad or evil or harmful, um, you know, and get away with it. That's not your intent, right? And so you can, can take a deep breath and you can rest on that. And so um, you can use that. Hopefully that helps. Character, action, motives. I think it's not just good for children, for youth, and learning to make decisions about each other as they interact and other people as they grow up. I think it's also, it's, it's a good self-practice to use in your own self-introspection. And I find it especially useful for, you know, these continuous, you know, for people who have continuous intrusive or bothersome thoughts or um, different patterns of you know, anxiety or worry over something or some specific thing happening, or maybe it did happen once. 
something bad happened and you just you can't seem to get a hold on your logic, use your character, your action, your motives, your intent. And I hope that helps and we will see you next time.